Here today, I want to introduce my colleague, Jennifer Brook, the interaction designer on this application, and Adam Kaplan, the engineer. So Steve showed you the website, the Times website, and it's just incredibly beautiful. Unbelievable imagery, unbeatable readability. So why did we come out here three weeks ago to develop this new application for the iPad? Well, we developed an application for the iPhone that has been downloaded over three million times, and we optimized that for that device. And now we want to do the same thing for the iPad, creating something that joins the best of print with the best of digital, all rolled up into one. Something that you can really immerse yourself in, lean back, and enjoy. So let's take a look. I'm so excited to share with you what we've been working on in the last couple weeks. We think that we've captured the essence of reading the newspaper, the finite snapshot in time, the exquisite typography, images, and content, and a superior reading experience all in a native application. Let's take a look. From the front page, you can easily flip through sections, tap into articles, or we can skip ahead to my favorite section to see today's latest stories. It captures the essence of reading the newspaper, but as you're about to see, it's so much more. I can save articles to my reading list, and it will sync to my iPhone so I can read them whenever I want. Or we can jump ahead to 36 hours to see the latest story in travel. The reading experience is great. You can tap to change the number of columns, resize text with a pinch, or we can flip through dozens of amazing slideshows. Let's jump to sports to see the latest coverage in the Olympics. It's an incredibly physical sport. In my opinion, skier cross athletes are some of the best skiers on the planet. Yeah, it's great to see uh, skier cross making it into the Olympics in 2010. When you're done reading, simply turn on updates to get breaking news and latest stories in all sections. It's everything you love about the paper, everything you love about the web, and everything you expect from the Times. Thanks, Jennifer. So this is just the beginning. <laughs> Thanks. We've been at this for three weeks, and we're incredibly psyched to uh, pioneer the next version of digital journalism. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. I already find myself reading the New York Times with my iPad in the morning through Safari. I can't wait to get this app. Next is Brushes. Brushes is an extremely popular uh, iPhone painting app. It's used by artists all over the world to create amazing works of art just using their fingertips. Equally amazing is the fact that Brushes is a one-person shop. To show you what he's been able to accomplish, in just a couple of weeks, I'd like to bring up that one person, Steve Sprang. Steve. Hi, guys. Good morning. Brushes is a simple yet powerful painting application designed for the iPhone. Artists of all skill levels have used it to produce countless paintings with just their fingertips. These paintings have appeared on the web, in galleries, and even in print. New York City street scenes by George Colombo have been used on the cover of The New Yorker on three occasions. Today, I'd like to show you how brushes looks on the iPad. We'll start here in the gallery where I've included a handful of original iPhone paintings. You can swipe between these, and you'll be able to share them in a variety of ways. When you want to edit a painting, you simply tap it, and it expands to fill the screen. Brushes takes full advantage of the new interface elements available in iPhone OS 3.2 allowing you to access your controls without significantly obscuring your artwork. The color panel has been redesigned to include an area for swatches where you can store your favorite colors. These can be rearranged, and you can double tap one to quickly select it and dismiss the panel. Of course, all of your favorite brushes for, from the iPhone are available here, too. You can adjust the size, the spacing, and the opacity. By pinching, you can zoom in up to 32 times. And by tapping and holding, you can activate the eyedropper tool, which allows you to pick up existing colors off the painting. Painting is as simple as dragging your finger across the screen. In this example, I'm removing the umbrella by painting over it with the background color. If you mess up, you can always undo. When you're done painting, just tap the gallery button to return to the gallery. 
On the iPad, brushes is going to support in-app playback of your paintings. Just tap the play button to see a replay of your actions. I'm really excited about the possibilities for brushes on this device. Artists have already done amazing things with the iPhone, and I think with this larger screen, they're gonna have a true portable paint studio. I can't wait to see what they can do with it, and I plan to have brushes available at the product launch. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. It's amazing. I mean, imagine an artist with a canvas this large that they can carry anywhere they go, including art students, in a way that's only a pound and a half. No paints, no easel. It's going to be incredible. Next up, Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts has been a major supporter of the iPhone platform ever since we launched the App Store, with over 40 titles already. EA is the number one worldwide publisher of mobile games. To show you what they're doing for the iPad, I'd like to invite up Travis Boatman. Travis. Thanks, Scott. Hey, everybody. So when Apple invited us to come on site and work with them on the iPad, we couldn't have been more excited. But as gamers, the first thing we wanted to check out was this device's performance. And what better game than Need for Speed? Now, as you can see here, we have a gorgeous 3D version of the BMW M3 GT displayed on this huge display. What you're gonna see next took us a very short period of time to get up and running on the device. And the reason why that's important is that means we're gonna be able to bring all of our other great EA games from the App Store to this device in no time. Now, we've made games for consoles and we've made games for the iPhone, but building for the iPad is something completely different. It's a little bit like holding a high-definition television screen just inches from your face. The field of view and the sensation of speed that you get is just incredible. It's not unlike if I turned around and was driving this monitor with my hands. Except I couldn't clearly lift that up, but this thing's so light that John's able to hold it in his hands and use the accelerometer to steer our car like a steering wheel. It's really cool. It's also fully touch enabled. And we had a lot of fun experimenting with different types of interfaces. For example, if John wants to see inside the car, there's no buttons required. He just taps right on the car. We had so much screen real estate, we started adding fun things like the shifter. Again, really intuitive. The user just swipes up and down with his finger to change gears. We also have so much screen real estate, we added mirrors. Simply tap on the mirror to look behind you. Yeah. Well, you've got to be careful where you're looking if you're driving. <laughs> but other than just a large screen and it being completely touch sensitive, again, for us, performance is really important. And a game like Need for Speed really pushes the limits. So we want to show you exactly how fast this device in this game really goes. <laughs> Yeehaw, nice driving, John. So that's Need for Speed running on the iPad, and you can expect a lot more great stuff coming from EA soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, that was nice. And last up is MLB.com. MLB.com is the official website of Major League Baseball and the publisher of MLB.com at bat. Now, that app has been downloaded nearly 2 million times and has streamed over 60 million videos making it one of the most popular sports apps in the App Store. To show you what they're doing with the iPad, I'd like to invite up Chad Evans. Chad. Thanks, Scott. Good morning, everybody. Joining me is Tracy Pesson, our Director of Mobile Engineering. We were extremely excited to build something for the iPad, and we realized we couldn't just take our existing iPhone application and make it bigger. We really need to create a whole new experience to take advantage of the big, gorgeous, interactive display. So let's take a look at the demo. So you're currently looking at our live game experience with data from last April. Across the top, you have our league scoreboard, which allows you to navigate to any of the day's games. On the field, you have our game day pitch tracker, which shows you the trajectory of every pitch thrown. And you can tap on a pitch to bring up additional details. You can also tap any player to flip open his baseball card. So you can see all the stats relevant to the current game situation. And now, with all this great screen space, we can actually show you video highlights